Can you name a chip that has been around for many decades? Not Lay's, not Cheetos. All right, here's a hint. It's packed in a cylindrical way with the mascot with a mustache. Yes, that's right, Pringles. Pringles is a brand of saddle-shaped potato crisps. The Pringles has had turbulence, but an interesting journey through history and is known for its unique cylindrical-shaped can that Pringles packages. The famous can that contains the chips has a story behind it, but in short, it was specifically created to prevent crushing and help keep the chips intact and uniform for the buyers. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel How It's Made. In this video today, we take an inside look into how the world's favorite Pringles are made. But before jumping into the video, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload a new video. That said, let's begin. How did Pringles start? From the moment the very first can was popped, the joy has never stopped. 1939. The world is at war, and in a devastating blow to snackers, potato chips are considered a non-essential food item. Production grinds to a halt. 1945. The war is over. We won. In the late 40s and early 50s, eating potato chips and making babies was back in a big, big way. Gains in supermarkets and mass production techniques lead the way for a potato chip boom that had almost every food factory throwing their potato skins into the chip game. But with growing rage came new scrutiny. Buyers started calling out some very debilitating issues with the traditional construction of the American potato chip. Number one, they get all greasy. Number two, they go stale way too quickly. Number three, they break in the bag before you can even eat them. Surely, there must be some simple, possibly cylindrical answer to this problem. 1956. Procter & Gamble, the world's largest producer of frying oils, took concerns into their own hands to create a potato chip completely void of flaws. They enlist chemist Frederick J. Bohr, who uses a geometric recipe to construct a saddle-shaped chip with a tubular vacuum sealed can. Bohr's perfect beauties are perfectly stackable. It is safely covered in a cardboard sheath and the unique stacking machine stops a bulk of the grease from spreading. But there's one big problem. They kind of suck. So PNG temporarily ditches the chip idea. By the mid-1960s, the Beatles were touring America, most of our parents were testing drugs, and PNG was on the hunt for new products. In classic corporate American fashion, they simply dug up an old idea and call it new. Bars Saddle Chips they created a brand new, sounds bad, but tastes excellent recipe of dehydrated potatoes, rice, corn, and wheat paste, complete with a dusting of savory flavor. They named this wonder food Pringles, newfangled potato chips. Quick tangent. No one knows exactly where the name Pringles comes from. One theory is that they're named after Mark Pringles, whose work was cited by Procter and Gamble in a patent. Another hypothesis credits two Procter advertisement employees who lived on Pringle Drive in Finneytown, Ohio. While some assume the name was just picked at random from the Cincinnati phone book for its pleasing sound, Anyway, back to the story. 1971. Pringles hit the shelves across the United States, but they're not the smash hit PNG expected. Soon, they try to demand the masses new flavors like barbecue, sour cream and onion, and cheddar cheese. 1975. Other chip makers catch wind of Pringles and cry foul. These are not typical potato fried chips, Pringles claim, as they are not produced with raw potatoes. The FDA weighs in, says, yeah, you guys actually have a point, and tells Pringles they need to lose the word chip, so they change to crisps and lose the latest fangled. In the early 1980s, Pringles started to take off. No one knows exactly what causes the spur in the spud product's favor, but some attribute it to an advertising campaign called Fever for the Flavor of Pringles. Others credit a Brad Pitt commercial. As Pringles surged in the United States, it shifted its focus to new global markets in Europe, South America, and Asia. The global expansion brings with it interesting new flavors like prawn cocktail, seaweed, serrano ham, roast chicken, and blueberry. But sadly, in 2008, the man behind this chip, Frederick J. Bauer, passed away due to cardiac arrest. But strangely enough, his family decided to put him in a Pringle coffin instead of other coffins. Invented as a scientifically savvy alternative to potato chips, now a billion dollar product sold across the world in 30 plus flavors, thank you Pringles for popping and then just refusing to stopping. How it's made? A fun fact, unlike other potato chips, Pringles is not made from raw potatoes. In the factory, they begin with the Pringles mix. 
This mix is the utmost factor in the taste of this famous chip. To make this stackable chips mix, the head scientist uses a ratio of one third of water and two thirds of potato flakes with a little cornstarch, maltodextrin, diglycerides, salt and wheat starch mixed in with their secret mix. This creates the exact flavor of the potatoes without using the raw material and it states that it contains 42% potatoes. After making this mixture, a conveyor delivers the mix to an auger which disperses it using 4 tons of pressure. They roll the mix into one long potato sheet. This sheet makes it easy to mold and cut into any piece they desire. But Pringles decided on the concave and to date this has been the same in shape ever since. Then a rotary cutter punches out oval shapes and a device pulls away the scrap dough leaving flat uncooked chips. But the leftover scrap dough is not thrown away. This dough is recycled again and again into the making of the Pringles. These non-cooked chips are then headed into the oiled filled fryer. As they travel through the fryer, rolling the molds give the chips the famous concave shape that Pringles are famous for. This concave shape makes them easy to stack the chip in cylindrical containers. These chips spend about 11 seconds in the fryer because of the hot oil, this makes them crispy. After this heavy, warm and oily journey, these concave shaped chips travel under blowers to get rid of excess oil that was present at the time of frying. The chips get an additional secret coating of Pringles seasoning that give them a specific taste. After getting its special seasoning, the chips do a backflip off one conveyor onto another. This results in falling into neat piles. Then a factory worker carefully inspects each and every row of chips with his super eye and picks out any chips that are disproportionate. Then it's onto another conveyor that shakes them up to lose in the stacks and they travel over scales to be portioned out for packaging. Automated spoons feed the chips into the open ends of the cylindrical tubes. Automated guides tap the top of the tubes to nudge the chips into the proper position and the final part is done by the grippers. The grippers lower the stack tubes into the station where spinning heads force on metal bottoms. After this, Pringle's journey is completed in the factory and now they are ready for shipping. It takes about 20 minutes to make a tube of stackable chips but it takes less time to eat them off. Some facts about Pringles you didn't know. Grab some chips and try not to eat the whole can because we've some crazy cool epic awesome funny weird wild expected true facts about Pringles. The guy in the Pringles can has a name. Yup, the Pringles guy is one of the most recognizable brand mascots on earth but I bet most of you didn't know his name. He is known as Julius Pringle. Yup, the mustachioed man on the Pringles can has been there since the beginning. Pringles have over a hundred different flavors worldwide and some of them, well, they're pretty great. There's smoked salami, prawn cocktail, Philly cheesesteak, funky mustard, bacon Caesar salad, mayo, potato seaweed, shell crabs, cinnamon, sweet potato, blueberry, hazelnut, garlic seafood, dill pickle roast, turkey chicken, wing, beef kebab, lemon and sesame and whatever cheese carnival nightclub and Grand Canyon french fry. We dare you to try all of those flavors. That's it guys, let us know if you found this video informative in the comment section. Also if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next one.